On today's episode, Elon is taking over AI, Tesla's holiday software delivers SantaBot and the CyberSlay, full self-driving receives a major new update, and Tesla finally agrees to buy your car. Elon Musk is up to something big in the world of artificial intelligence. On the one hand, he's creating new AI-based products at an incredible speed, and on the other, he's using the legal system to smash his biggest competition. The irony here is that it was Musk himself who co-founded and funded OpenAI. Now he's using that leverage to try and destroy his own creation. Elon has spent the past five months wrapped up in a legal battle against Sam Altman and OpenAI. The basic premise is that when Musk invested $44 million into the company, he was told that OpenAI would remain a non-profit, open-source venture. But as time went on, that has become less and less the case. Now, OpenAI is heavily backed by Microsoft and valued at around $100 billion. Elon claims he was manipulated and lied to about OpenAI from the very beginning by Sam Altman, and now he's seeking damages. Of course, this is not about money. $44 million is actually nothing to Elon Musk or OpenAI. This is about real damages to OpenAI and its ability to function as a company. In his latest move, Elon is leveraging his ongoing lawsuit to prevent OpenAI from completing its transition from a non-profit to a for-profit entity. Basically, he's saying that if OpenAI changes state in the middle of the lawsuit, things would become too entangled and complicated. It's possible that Elon can halt OpenAI's growth for as long as he can keep this lawsuit going. In the meantime, Elon is moving fast with his own XAI startup. The company is moving forward with their Grok language model to create a genuine competitor to ChatGPT. For the past year, Grok has only been available as a chatbot feature inside the premium tier of the X social media platform, so it's not been widely adopted by the mainstream. Most average people probably don't even know that Grok exists. But with their next step forward, XAI will release Grok as a standalone app, just like ChatGPT, so it can be used totally independent of the X platform for the first time. Grok might even be available to use for free in a limited tier. In addition to that, Elon Musk is now threatening to use XAI to launch his own video game studio. We know that Elon himself is a very hardcore gamer. Apparently, he's one of the best Diablo 4 players in the world. And he's just recently announced that XAI is going to start an AI game studio to make games great again. He claims that the motivation for this is that too many existing game studios are owned by massive corporations. So says the richest man in the world and owner of several massive corporations. Anyway, that irony aside, this is all giving us a much better idea of what Elon and XAI are planning to do with the billions of dollars worth of computing power that they've been purchasing and installing this year. Over the summer, XAI fired up their very own supercomputer. It's named Colossus, and it's the most powerful AI training computer in the world. It's powered by over 100,000 NVIDIA GPU chips, with tens of thousands more on the way. We recently heard NVIDIA warning that there is going to be a limited supply of AI training chips in the near future, and they attributed much of that to Elon Musk buying all of them. And now, this is where the real money comes in. Do you remember when Musk bought Twitter for $44 billion? And then the value of the company dropped like a rock as Elon totally restructured the entire operation? Well, that value is on its way back up, and that's due entirely to the company's new AI division. The value of XAI just hit $50 billion at the end of November, making it more valuable than the old Twitter ever was or ever would have been. That's giving investors a whole new level of confidence in Elon Musk. Tesla is bundling up and sending a large holiday update right in time for, well, the holidays. Rolling out to owners starting next week, Tesla has this time shared the feature list ahead of time, likely to avoid the leaks that have also become quite common. First up, the Tesla app is coming to Apple Watch. We just love watching our speculations and breadcrumb discoveries from earlier videos come alive. The Watch app includes buttons at each corner, and it looks like you'll be able to swipe between multiple vehicles. The app can also be used as a phone key to view battery charge, open the frunk, and turn on climate control. Next, you can now save dash cam and sentry mode footage as 30 second clips to your phone right through the app. Auto shift between drive and reverse on the stockless refresh model three can now automatically shift between drive and reverse to handle parking lot maneuvers and multi-point turns. This was expected for a while with a similar feature for newer model S and X launched earlier this year. In 2021, Elon had said that auto shift would be an optional setting for all cars with FSD, so we shall see if that happens. Sirius XM is now available for Model 3, Y, and Cybertruck. We had seen the rumors since the summer, and it's great to finally have that live. You can now set arrival energy, your preferred battery charge level for when you arrive at your destination. Search a route with estimated detour times when navigating. Search results are now filtered to show options like restaurants or coffee shops along your route, and it'll also display the estimated detour time. A precipitation map and weather at destination will be a new overlay option, where you can view precipitation directly on the map, 
to check the weather at your destination. As is typically done in weather apps, the map shows an animation of precipitation over a time period, in this case, three hours. Rear cross traffic alert. When in reverse, your vehicle will alert you if it detects a pedestrian or vehicle crossing behind you. An audible warning will also play if a potential collision is detected. You can now personalize your Cybertruck avatar with a custom wrap and license plate. Use one of many preloaded designs or create and upload custom ones using a USB flash drive. Details on templates and instructions are now published on GitHub. Tesla's Cybertruck account puts it like this. Give in to your intrusive thoughts and create the most unhinged custom wrap for your Cybertruck. The Cybertruck also gets rear camera improvements, like a larger feed and the ability to pinch to zoom in or out. Cybertruck Rear Arcade is now available too, so you can play games on the rear screen while cruising around. Of course, one more specialized personalization was missing for the Cybertruck for Christmas. You guessed it, it's Santa Mode. Santa Mode changes your Cybertruck avatar into Santa's sleigh, or should I say cyber sleigh, including reindeer, elves, and more. By more, I mean Optimus sitting in the front seat as a proper robot Santa. The fun doesn't stop there. We've now got another emissions feature update, a fart on contact option. It'll let out a sound each time it detects a new bum hitting the seat. Sit happens, Tesla writes. Tesla has also added a new game, Boomerang Foo, where you can slice and dice your friends with Boomerang. On a more serious note, the Tesla AI team has clearly been working tirelessly through Thanksgiving because FSD version 13 has just begun rolling out to customer vehicles. Version 13 should feature a five to six times improvement in miles between necessary human interventions compared to FSD version 12.52. Elon recently said it is trending to be about 500% better. He also stated that Tesla has the best real-world AI by far. In addition to the improvements, this new update comes with the ability to unpark, essentially starting supervised autonomous driving while parked, and the ability to park itself when reaching a destination. The car will now park itself if it finds an open parking spot near the final location. The ability to reverse, Tesla shifts seamlessly between park, drive, and reverse now all by itself. Tesla says that further improvements are coming to FSD parking, and drivers will be able to pick between pulling over, parking in a parking spot, driveway, or garage in the future. Also, don't miss this great 16 video thread by Tesla on how each FSD version is rigorously tested before launching to the public. For the first time ever, Tesla has officially introduced end of lease buyouts for the S, 3, XY models, and the Cybertruck in the US. It is also retroactive, so all current Tesla lessees will be eligible for a buyout at a future date. Tesla lease customers will be able to request a buyout quote directly through the Tesla app, and those with third parties can just go through there. This makes for a good time to ask, why would Tesla do this? The option is great from the customer standpoint, but considering Tesla's balls-to-the-wall approach on autonomy, and the cyber cab launch on the streets being imminent? Why didn't Tesla stick to what Elon had said earlier about Tesla wanting the cars back for robo-taxi? At the same time, this will help Tesla in the short term. You know, there's a huge Q4 sales push going on to beat last year's sales, so this option might be a temporary move from Tesla. Perhaps it's just to add more personally owned robo-taxis to the upcoming network, mixed with the cyber cabs Tesla launches itself. Ultimately, it should be easier to manage cyber cabs as a company than all the other models, like years old Model 3s with those redundant steering wheels and pedals and stuff. So will Tesla bank on scaling up its cyber cab fleet so much that it doesn't want to buy back the other aging Teslas to operate them anymore? Well, we know Tesla will allow current Tesla owners to send their Teslas into the autonomous ride-hailing network anyway. So perhaps this approach makes sense.